Autumn's officially here and the Texas high school football action is heating up. These are the picks. Welcome into the Picks, presented by Visit Arlington, your guide to the Texas high school football weekend. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thanks for tuning in to week seven of the Texas high school football season. We're now into October, and there are huge games all across the state, many of them district games, especially in the small school ranks. Remember, week seven for the small schools, week three for the big schools. But everywhere you look across Texas, there are huge games. We will start in Central Texas. 7 o'clock Friday night at Mart ISD Athletic Complex. It's a huge 2A Division II showdown between the Mart Panthers and the Bremont Tigers. What are the keys to this matchup? Key number one, small school superstars. So both of these teams, kind of like a lot of big name small school squads, have guys who are just unbelievable. Single individual talents who are able to take over the game at a moment's notice. For Mart, it's Roger L. Freeman, the, the running back, quarterback, linebacker, defensive lineman, whatever you want to call him. He's a monster out there. He is a mismatch out there against any 2A Division II squad, and he's going to have his say in this big time district showdown. Going up against Seth Kazowski, the quarterback for Bremon, who is Amazing. He is a tremendous, tremendous signal caller. He would be a fantastic signal caller pretty much at any level, let alone at the 2A Division II level. So, you've got these two guys who are capable of taking over the game. Which one steps up? Key number two, Bremon in the backfield. So, there's actually a pretty telling statistic, I would say, for when Bremon wins and when they lose. They're four and two on the year, and in their two losses, they've gotten just three tackles for a loss per each of those games, on average. In their four wins, it's nearly double that. So they're going to need a huge game from Jure Bledsoe and Corey Estrada get in the backfield and disrupt this Mart rushing attack. Can the Tigers get into the Mart backfield? And key number three, weight class. So we're talking about 2A Division II here, the smallest 11-man classification, and we're dealing with the three-time defending 2A Division II state champions in Mart. Well, technically, that 2017 title was in 2A Division I, but that's neither here nor there. What matters is that Mart has had to punch up in order to get challenged this year. Uh, in their non-district schedule, they played four games, all against 3A competition, going up at least two divisions, sometimes three divisions, to play. Last week, they played their first game against a 2A Division II team in district rival Chilton, and they won 50 to nothing. Now, Bremont, in my opinion, is a lot better than Chilton. So this is going to be their first big test on the 2A Division II level. So what happens when Mart punches in their weight class? Who am I picking? I'm going with Mart. You got to pick the three-time defending state champions here, especially at home in a critical district matchup because of the strength of Roger L. Freeman, that outstanding running game, and I think the defense. I think the Mart defense is really starting to round into form uh, this year, and I think they're going to be very dangerous. Now, look, Seth Kozowski is absolutely capable of taking over this game, and I want to see what happens when the Bremont front, which has been largely very good, goes up against the Mart offensive line. But for now, I'm picking the Panthers to bring home the win. How about some Thursday night action? 7 o'clock Thursday night at Wilkerson Sanders Stadium in Rockwall. It's big time 6A clash between the South Lake Carroll Dragons and the Rockwall Yellow Jackets. Where are the keys to this matchup? Key number one, there will be points. That is a prediction. There will be a lot of points scored in this game because, well, both of these offenses are crazy good. And, well, both of these defenses are figuring it out, let's say. Rockwall's averaging 60 points per game so far behind quarterback Braden Locke. They have been tremendous offensively, and yeah, they're giving up 39 points a game, but they're scoring 60, right? Meanwhile, South Lake Carroll, with quarterback Quinn Ewers, played their first game last week against Rockwall Heath, and they won 72-57. to Big high-scoring shootout. So here's a bold prediction. This is going to be pretty pointsy. Who is able to come up with maybe one or two stops? Key number two, youth movement. And while I like to talk about youngsters on the field, let's talk about relative youngsters on the sideline. These are two of the best, most exciting young coaches in Texas high school football right now on the sideline. For South Lake Carroll, it's Riley Dodge, who's off to a fantastic start in his career there with the Dragons, his alma mater. And so far, he's establishing himself as a rising star in Texas high school football. On the other side, you have Trey Brooks. Promoted from offensive coordinator for at Rockwall, where he was the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Assistant Coach of the Year last year. He is an offensive guru and one of the budding young stars in the state. So, 
with these two young superstar coaches, who can make the one or two adjustments that could put their team over the top? And key number three, early season jitters. So it's easy to forget that even though we're in basically mid-October at this point, this is just the third week for the 6A schools to be able to play games. And Rockwell's playing their third game, Carroll just their second game. So it's probably important to remember, this is early days yet. This is still a non-district game. This is still teams figuring themselves out. Teams figuring out exactly what they're about. And when you factor in the strangest offseason in Texas high school football history, there's bound to be some growing pains for both of these squads. So right now, these may not be finished products as teams, but which team is closer to their end point than the other? Who am I picking? I'm going with Carroll. I think Southlake comes home with a win, obviously because of quarterback Quinn Ewers, and I think they're able to turn the ball over maybe one or two times uh, to get a stop and break serve in what should be a high-scoring slugfest. Look, both of these quarterbacks are going to take center stage in Braden Locke and Quinn Ewers. And, and I'd love to sit here and be the hipster and say, oh, well, actually, uh, I think these defenses are really going to come out and do something big. No, I think this is going to be pretty pointy. I think it's going to be a high-scoring shootout, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But I think Carroll comes away with one or two extra plays to put them over the top. Give me the Dragons. 7 o'clock Friday night at Gupton Stadium in Cedar Park. It's a critical District 11 5A Division I showdown as the Georgetown Eagles take on the Cedar Park Timberwolves. And this is a huge district game. I know it's week three for the big schools, but this is still a massive, massive game down there in the Central Texas area. You know, I've been very impressed with Georgetown so far. The balanced offense they've had with Ryan Eady, their running back, and Darson Herman, their quarterback. It's been terrific, and they're off to a deserved 2-0 start. Now up against a big challenge with Cedar Park. That Black Rain defense looks the part. They look like they traditionally do, and of course, they've got the dynamic quarterback in Ryder Hernandez, a three-year starter for the Timberwolves. I think this game is close, and I think it could have major playoff implications, but I do think Cedar Park comes away with a win. 7 o'clock Friday night at Eagle Stadium in DeSoto. Big time 6A clash between the Prosper Eagles and the DeSoto Eagles. And DeSoto was dazzling in their debut last week against Converse Judson, shutting out the Rockets for the first time since 2005. That's impressive. Defensive end Shamar Turner was terrific. Quarterback Samari Collier has really taken a step forward. This DeSoto team looks like the real deal. Going up against Prosper, who is also off to a fantastic start at 2-0. Jackson Berry, their quarterback, is terrific. And I was very impressed with the way that they beat Ewell's Trinity last week, kind of beating with their own game, big, strong, physical defense. This is going to be a much different test against a wide open and fast DeSoto team. Uh, this is a huge test for both these teams. I think a great measuring stick in this non-district matchup. I give DeSoto a very slight edge, but keep an eye on this one. But those are far from the only big games in week seven of the Texas high school football season. Let's get to the lightning round. The season opener in week seven, how very 2020. I like Hidalgo over Rio Grande City La Grulia. Give me Franklin to beat Rogers, and I like Columbus over Hitchcock. I like Cristoval over Rock Springs, and give me Norman G over Jewett Leon. Longview edges out Tyler Legacy. Allen takes down Cedar Hill, and give me College Station over Magnolia. I like West Orange Stark over Silsby. Lano beats Comfort in a battle of unbeatens, and I like Odessa Permian over Amarillo Tascosa. Amarillo over Canyon Randall. Mount Vernon stays perfect with a win over Mineola. And Yoakum takes down Bowling. Carthage keeps rolling with a win over center. Give me Wascom to run past Hugh Springs. And I like Hamlin over Rawls. San Augustine takes down Joaquin. I like El Paso Americas over El Paso Eastlake. And Idaloo stays perfect with a win over Coahoma. I like Smithson Valley over San Antonio Wagner. Fredericksburg takes down Burnett. And I'm going with Marion over Catula. Post beats Sundown, Port Arthur Memorial just barely over Laporte, and I like Pottsboro to take down Commerce. I like Canyon over Andrews and Sweetwater over Midland Greenwood. I'm buying stock in Temple. I think the Wildcats beat Arlington Martin. Give me Salado to take down Waco Connolly, and Mansfield Timberview in a close one over Flower Mound. Seymour beats only in our six-man game of the week. I like Balmeray over Groom. And those are the picks. What am I wrong about? Which games did I leave out? Leave comments down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbells. And of course, see us at texasfootball.com. Thanks for watching. Enjoy week seven of the Texas high school football season. Be safe, wear a mask. We'll see you.